Welcome back everyone. Uh, in this lecture, we will talk about uh, cosets, the notion of cosets. So, I will first uh, begin with uh, many examples and then uh, we will uh, later uh, see the definition of cosets and basic properties of cosets. Okay, so, let us actually start with uh, some familiar examples. Uh, so, let us take uh, the group of integers Z. So, this is the uh, group of integers with respect to addition. Okay. So, then uh, one can actually uh, take for example, a subgroup. Okay. So, let us consider this uh, 2z. So, let us uh, denote it by h. So, g is our z and h is our 2z. So, this is actually a subgroup of g that we have already seen. So, now uh, we have uh, these following uh, sets uh, that are actually related to this subgroup. Okay. So, what are they? So, this is something already appeared in our previous discussions. Uh, uh, for example, I can take uh, any integer let us say a in z. Okay. So, for any a in z, so consider this a plus 2 z. So, what is this? So, this is a plus 2n where n comes from z. So, as a set it is just a translation of uh, this subgroup 2 z by this element a. So, what is important about uh, this subset? Okay. So, these subsets more or less look like the group that we started with that is h. Okay. For example, it is not that hard to see, okay. this I will leave it as exercise. So, you can verify because this is about the integers. So, if we take these sets okay, which are subsets of z, a plus 2 z and then let us consider another subset b plus 2 z. So, we can ask this question when they are equal. Okay. For example, if I consider 2 plus 2 z, so that will be same as z plus 2 z. So, this is not very hard to see. So, there are uh, integers uh, for which these, these sets actually become equal a plus 2 z becomes equal to b plus 2 z and it is not hard to determine when it will happen. So, this will happen if and only if this a minus b it is an even integer. Okay. So, this belongs to 2 z. So, in some sense we are actually looking at all possible translations of uh, this subgroup 2z and then we see that if we consider them then they are actually equal if and only if this a minus b is actually even integer. And there is another important property. Okay. So, either they will be equal okay, for any a comma b integers, if you consider a plus 2 z, either it is equal to b plus 2 z or if we take the intersection a plus 2 z intersection with b plus 2 z, so that will be empty. Okay. Again, this is not uh, that hard to actually see. So, what one need needs to prove okay let us verify this fact if this if they are equal then there is nothing to prove okay then assume that they are not equal okay then we want to prove that the intersection must be empty so we can actually uh, work like this also for example we can start with assuming the intersection is being non empty because if it is empty then there is nothing to prove Okay, so, assume okay, a plus 2 z intersection with b plus 2 z. So, this is actually non-empty. So, that means there exists x such that that x can be written as some a plus 2 n and uh, b plus 2 n. So, then it is clear that this implies a minus b this is in 2 z. Okay. So, then from the previous exercise you can see that, so this a minus b if it is uh, even then 
the corresponding sets okay so these will be called cosets in this case so they are actually equal okay so then this implies a plus 2z is same as b plus 2z so this is something i will leave it to verify okay this is not hard to verify so that means these sets they are they are somewhat very very special kind of sets defined using this subgroup 2z okay so in particularly using this property you can see that they form okay if you collect them together as uh, subsets of z they form a partition of z okay and it is not hard to see so there are only two of them okay so for example one corresponds to 0 and another corresponds to 1 so this is something we have already seen these are all the total number of a plus 2z cosets corresponding to the subgroup 2z okay so then it is not hard to see z is written as 0 plus 2z union disjoint union 1 plus 2z so this is something we have seen already so i am just recalling in this setting okay so similar thing happens for any subgroup of z okay so let us consider now general subgroup okay let us take for example n z okay again we can define the cosets corresponding to this uh, n z so what it will be it will be some x plus n z which is by definition x plus some k times n where k is running over z okay so this is the coset corresponding to x and the subgroup n z okay so now again uh, i will leave it to you to verify okay this is something we already verified that is why i don't want to do it again so this is not that hard you can prove that x plus n z is same as y plus n z if and only if this n divides x minus y or x minus y is multiple of n okay and if you take uh, two of them x plus n z intersection y plus n z if this is non empty then that would imply that x plus n z is same as y plus n z so in particularly this collection x plus n z when x x runs over all integer that will form actually the distinct sets that will form a partition of z okay and it is not hard to see there are exactly n number of such cosets for example corresponding to 0 corresponding to 1 and corresponding to n minus 1 etc so this is these are all the set of all cosets okay so this is these are all something that we have already verified that i will leave it to you to actually check again so this is some example that we have seen uh, already so that comes from the group of integers so now let us move on to geometry okay and then uh, consider for example vector spaces and then their subspaces so let us take something uh, very simple for example let us consider r2 so this is the two dimensional uh, real space so then uh, it is not hard to actually see that uh, any one dimensional subspace of this will be a subgroup okay so r2 can be considered as actually group with respect to the addition that is the coordinate wise addition okay if i take two elements x bar y bar in r2 plus where x bar is written as let's say x1 x2 and then y bar is written as y1 y2 so then x bar plus y bar defined to be x1 plus x2 y1 plus y2 so with respect to this this actually form a abelian group okay this is something uh, part of the definition of vector space and it can be verified for this particular addition okay now one can take any one dimensional subspace of r2 let us call it v so this is let us say one dimensional subspace of r2 okay for example one can take only v to be x axis okay here the examples 
and then one can take V to be y axis both of them are actually one dimensional subspace. And it is not hard to see actually any one dimensional subspace of R2 that will actually pass through the origin. Okay. So, basically any one dimensional space, so it will look something like this. So, this is what your V. Okay. So, this V will be just some lambda times some x naught where lambda will be in R, where x naught is actually some unique vector that is determined by this V. So, any subspace, okay. so let us say V x here, this is a subspace V y, this is also a subspace. In particularly for any x naught, so V x naught will be just lambda x naught where lambda coming from R for x naught in R2. So, this is again a subspace of R2. Okay. In particularly it is a subgroup of R2. So, this is what the V looks like. So, let me draw it again. Okay. So, this is your R2. Okay. So, let us take first of all x axis itself. Let us consider this uh, V 1 comma 0. Okay. So, let us rewrite this notation using the thing that we have already introduced. So, this is V 1 comma 0 and this is 0 comma 1. So, what is this? This by definition this is those lambda comma 0 where lambda coming from R and this is 0 comma lambda, lambda coming from R. Okay. So, now uh, if we take this V 1 0, so which is actually x axis V 1 0, this is x axis. So, now what we can do? We can actually translate this x axis by any element of R 2. Okay. Let us take some element x, call it x 1 comma x 2 from R 2 and then as before that we did it in the case EJ. So, in EJ what we did? So, we took this subgroup N EJ and then we looked at possible translation of this N EJ by elements of EJ. Okay. That is what we called it coset. Okay. So, geometrically speaking this has very very nice interpretation. Okay. So, basically coset that is something looks like that subgroup, but it is not a subgroup, it is some kind of translation. Okay. So, that is something we have to make sense of for the general group. For that purpose, let us see this uh, practical example, then we will generalize. So, now as before given this element x bar inside R2, we can consider the translation x bar v1 comma 0. Okay. So, note that this x bar plus v 1 comma 0, it is a translation of x axis. So, translation of x axis will be again look like x axis only, okay. but it is just translated a bit. So, let us algebraically write down what it is. So, if you just work, work this out, you can see that you will be adding x 1 comma x 2 plus lambda comma 0, where lambda is just running over r. So, that means, so this is going to be exactly equal to x 1 plus lambda comma x 2 where lambda is running over r. So, what is this? So, if you write it, you can see that. So, this x bar plus v 1 comma 0 is exactly equal to. So, because this x 1 is fixed lambda varying over r. So, this is going to give you some x x dash or lambda dash. Okay. Let me call it lambda dash and then comma x 2 where lambda dash also again varying over from r. Okay. So, but what it is? It is a line. For example, if you take x 2 to be 1, okay. if you take x 2 to be 1, then this is line that is parallel to x axis passing through 0 comma 1. Okay. 
So, depending upon x2 positive, let us say x2 positive, then x2 will be somewhere here, okay. This is the 0, comma x2. So, this is exactly this x bar plus v1, comma 0 is just a line that is parallel to x axis, but it passes through that 0, comma x2. So, this is your x bar plus v1, comma 0. Similarly, when x2 is less than 0, then this x2 will be plotted here, okay. So, 0, comma x2 will be plotted here. Again, it will be a line passing through that. So, this will be x bar plus v, your v1, comma 0 and this will be just a parallel uh, line, okay, that passes through 0, comma x2 parallel to this x axis. So, this is your x axis, okay. So, this means what? This means this x bar plus v1, comma 0, even geometrically speaking, it looks exactly like x axis. It is just a translation of x axis, okay. So, so when you do this for vector spaces, it becomes actually very, very clear what we are really doing. But this is something we want to do it for actually any group, okay. So, now let us consider uh, a line that actually passes through uh, just origin, okay. Let us take again R2 and then consider this line that passes through, through just uh, origin, okay, any line. So, that is your let us say Vx0. So, then I will leave it to you to check if you translate this line with respect to some x bar, okay. If it is x bar plus Vx0, if you take, then that will be just a line that is parallel to this v x naught. So, this will be your this will be your uh, x bar plus v x naught. So, this is something I will leave it to, to verify, okay. So, here are some more uh, again uh, geometric uh, uh, examples, okay. For example, uh, let us consider now R 3, okay. So, for example, you can take just uh, V to be x y plane. The axis that I am actually denoting it by x y z axis, okay. So, this V I am taking it to be x y plane. So, let us draw this picture. So, this is going to be our 3D space, okay. Let us call this is x, this is y. So, this is the plane that we are talking about, okay. So, now for example, if you take some x bar inside R3, okay, where x bar is given by x1, x2, x3. So, then if you consider x bar plus v, so then it is not hard to work it out what it will be. So, in x y plane, the z coordinate will be 0. So, this is x comma y comma 0, where x y comes from R. So, in particularly, so, this x bar plus v will be some x comma y comma x 3 where again x y will come from r, okay. So, depending upon let us say x 3 positive, then it will be a plane that is actually parallel to uh, parallel to x axis, okay. So, this is the plane that we are going to get x bar plus capital V if x 3 is positive. And other, otherwise, it will actually go down to the below, okay. So, geometrically it is clear that if you if you just uh, translate the plane, you will again get the plane. But uh, so, you can see that there is a natural bijective correspondence between uh, the x y plane and its translation, okay. That is also clear. The same thing is clear even in the R2 case, okay. So, now let us have some uh, example which is not linear, okay. So, for that purpose let us consider the complex plane, okay, that is your C. So, this is a group with respect to addition, uh, the one that I wanted actually the non-zero complex numbers with respect to mul multiplication, okay. So, this is a multiplicative group. Okay, so this is uh, uh, yeah not linear. Okay, so then 
what it will be it is just the punctured plane. So, you have removed uh, this uh, complex number and then you have the punctured plane and then what we can use we can use this polar coordinates to denote elements of C star. For example, given Z in C star one can write Z as some r times e power i theta where r is coming from actually r cannot be 0. So, it has to be come from the positive real line and then theta can come from 0 to 2 pi. Okay. So, now we can take h to be your subgroup that I can take it to be S1. Okay. So, what is S1? S1 by definition it is a unit circle inside C cross. This is those z in C cross such that mod z is 1 and it is clearly a subgroup because the product of uh, 2 unit vectors will be unit inverse of unit vector is again unit. So, then uh, it is easy to see that this unit circle okay, this is the unit circle it is a subgroup of okay, subgroup of C cross. So, now where it is actually it is you can draw it like this. So, this is our S1. Okay. So, now what we can do we can take some z which is some r times let us say e power i theta. So, which is an element of C cross and then as before. So, in the previous cases what we did we did translation of the subgroup okay. because the binary operation there is actually addition. But here the binary operation is multiplication the translation amounts to multiplying this z by the subgroup S1. Okay. So, one can naturally consider this z times S1. So, what it is this is just a notation. Okay. This is something uh, that we need to understand we have not defined what it is. So, this is something I am defining it to be. So, this is just a notation. I am writing this z time S1 as what it is is z times z dash where z as comes from S1. So, this is the natural definition of uh, this uh, set z times S1 which is a subset of this C cross. Okay. So, now if we do some algebraic calculation we can see that what is this z times S1. So, this z times S1 because z is nothing but r times e power i theta z dash is given by e power some i uh, some z okay so then z s dash will be set of all r times e power i theta plus z okay now this theta is fixed okay so then you are actually uh, going to run over this z from 0 to 2 pi but because of the winding you can see that so you can actually Oh, sorry. Uh, this is uh, something we write. We should write it as two pi z. Okay. Let's let's uh, change the index indexing set a bit so that uh, we don't need to worry about uh, this winding. Okay. So let's take this theta comes from R. Okay. Anyway, this doesn't change anything. Okay. So, then it is clear uh, this indexing set will be will be changing a bit e power i z. So, then this theta uh, plus z will run over r so that uh, so this z is running over r which is same as r times e power some i theta dash where theta dash will run over R. Okay. So, but what it is? So, as a set you can see these are all elements that has exactly uh, the length is r. Okay. The modulus of r e power i theta dash is nothing but r since r is positive number. So, geometrically speaking this z times s1 is nothing but another circle which is has radius r and center or center 0. Okay. So, this is going to be your your new new element. Okay. 
So, exactly this is our Z S 1 and of course, depending upon the value of mod Z, the mod Z equal to R if it is greater than 1 then this is what we get. If it is uh, for example, less than 1 okay, then we will get the inner circle. So, this is going to be inside if this is going to be our Z S 1 if mod Z is less than 1 and of course, mod Z equal to 1 you will get this S 1. But what is important here okay, because we have the binary operation which is multiplication and by multiplying this group S 1 by this fixed Z we get some new object which exactly looks like S 1 okay, that is what important okay. and there is a natural bijective correspondence between this S 1 and Z S 1 and you can see that so the geometrically also the shape of this is actually not uh, not changing okay so most of the time the binary operation that you actually consider depending upon the space that you are working with it will be very nice map okay so that nice map is actually going to preserve most of the things and of course depending upon the the modulus either being greater than 1 or less than 1 it actually either squeezes the circle or expands the circle okay but the shape of the circle i would say it doesn't change okay this is some uh, one good example of uh, multiplicative uh, side so we can also create uh, we can also actually uh, do more example like this so for example one can take uh, uh, this uh, again the multiplicative group uh, C cross okay, and then I can look at this R plus so which is the positive real line. So, this is those R such that R is positive. So, geometrically speaking so you have this uh, punctured plane okay. so let us draw it properly. So, you have the punctured plane and then what is my what is my R plus? R plus is this okay. So, now again we can use the polar coordinates and then try to determine so what will be the the coset corresponding to uh, this subgroup okay. So, as before what will be the coset? For example, I can pick some Z which I can denote it by R times e power i theta. So, this is something you can fix and then look at this Z R plus. So, you can easily see that the modulus value is actually not going to change do anything. So, this is going to be exactly equal to R times e power i theta times some R dash where R dash comes from open 0 comma infinity. So, then this is going to be e power i theta and then R plus. Okay. So, then geometrically it is clear that so this is going to be this new ray okay. this is the ray is R plus and this is the ray e power i theta R plus. So, where this is the angle theta that it makes with the x axis of course, theta if it is depending upon theta the ray actually changes. So, from these examples so, what are all the important uh, things that we have actually seen? Okay, first of all, uh, we have a natural bijection from the coset and the group and the subgroup that we have actually started with. So, that is one thing, and you can see that these cosets, okay, so that is actually going from, uh, so they are changing and they are all disjoint, that is what important, okay, and they cover entire so if you take all the rays okay where, where the theta actually varying then it is easy to see so they all cover actually our uh, group c cross so in particularly they form a partition of our uh, our sub our group okay so these are all the properties of cosets so that we will actually formally define and then prove it later but anyway before that I also want to actually give you somewhat more sophisticated examples okay. 
again I will leave it you to actually work with them ok. So, it will be very fun. So, for example, what one can do one can take uh, roots of unity ok let us call it u n. So, this is uh, those eject in the multiplicative group C cross such that eject power n is 1. And one knows that this is a finite group and this is generated by the primitive nth roots of unity. So, the primitive nth roots of unity you can de denote it by this e power i 2 pi by n ok. So, then it is clear that the group is actually generated by this, this is a cyclic group. And this is being a subgroup of C cross ok, one can ask what will be z u n ok for any z in C cross ok. So, just uh, try to actually identify so what this uh, z u n are ok and then try to parameterize them ok and then see what you are getting. So, I will leave this as exercise and similarly one can also work with uh, this uh, rational group ok with respect to addition. So, this is my first exercise and this is the second exercise. So, you can work with uh, this rational numbers uh, q plus ok. So, now uh, what one can do? So, naturally this z is sitting inside q ok. Similarly, for any n, n z also sitting inside q. So, I want you to actually look at all the translation of first of all with respect to z. So, what will be what are all this x plus z? Find out some parameterizing set for all of them and then what is about x plus n z? ok for some fixed n. So, with respect to these two subgroups, so determine all possible translations are the cosets. So, these are all the cosets ok. So, as an exercise you should try to determine them and then that that is what gives you better understanding of cosets ok. So, I will stop here actually we have seen many many examples uh, that are more practical and uh, uh, geometrical ok. So, these examples uh, we want to actually generalize and abstract them and then define cosets in any given group and subgroups ok. And then we will define them and then we will see some properties of these cosets as noticed in these examples and then we will use them and then try to understand uh, the group property and the subgroup properties ok. I will stop here. Thank you.